it's an honor and a privilege to be among you. I know they're very powerful people among this little crowd, but uh, it's not about the size of the crowd, but the quality of the crowd. And it's an honor and a privilege to be with you here. Open your Bibles in Colossians chapter one. Verse nine, it says, for this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. When we come to Christ and we want to follow him, we leave behind our former works, our former sins, well, at least that's the way it's supposed to be, at least that's the way it was in my life and in many others. But to know the will of the Lord requires a different understanding and a different knowledge. One thing is to follow the commandments of the Lord. And of course, as we do what the Bible says we should do, we are under his will. But the truth is that we need spiritual understanding and knowledge to understand what is the will of the Lord for you particularly, for this day, for this city. Amen? The kingdom of God is not of this world. The kingdom of God is not something that we can enter with natural understanding. Jesus says, said to Herod, my kingdom is not of this world. He said to his disciples, neither are you from this world. The Lord spoke and says, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And we are entering a time of great fulfillment. This is a time in which the Lord is going to fulfill a major, I mean, major amount of prophecies that he has been speaking. And he's looking for people that can tune up with his spirit in order to be the instruments of God for this hour. We want to be sharp instruments in his hands. Instruments that understand and are ready to yield to what he says and obey to what he says and go in the flow and the direction of what he's saying. is like a knife in the hands of a skilled doctor. Imagine if that knife has its own will and the surgeon wants to make a, a very uh, precise surgery, and the knife has a will of his own, and the knife cannot follow the hand of the doctor. It will be a mess, right? Well, the earth is that person or that body that the Lord wants to make surgery to, and he's looking for people that can yield in such a way to his spirit, to the understanding of his will, that he can take us and do whatever he wants. So when Paul is hearing about the love and, and, and the devotion of the Colossians, he says, this is amazing, but what you need, what you really need to understand his will is spiritual knowledge and spiritual understanding. Amen? Then it says, let's read 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, speaking of course of Jesus, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Hallelujah. It pleased him that all the fullness of God will dwell in Jesus and through him reconcile all things, those that are in heaven and those that are on earth. I want you to notice that doesn't say all men, but it says all things. Because God wants to reconcile everything. 
So whatever is happening in the heavens will happen in the earth as well. That's how we pray. How, how, I mean, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth the same way as it is in heaven. So it's not speaking about commandments. It's speaking about an understanding on how to tune up or line up with what heaven is speaking to you today. Because many times we get married to former revelation, to former moves of God, and God has totally changed what he's saying because every day is new. Every day his mercies are new for us. Everything is a surprising, magnificent day that has been created in heaven to manifest it to you. I can do godly things totally out of the will of the Lord. I can be a very nice person. I can be an amazing good preacher and be totally out of the will of the Lord if I don't understand that the house of the Lord is alive, that heavens are alive. Ephesians 1.9 says said that it is his good will that in the time of the completion of times, all things will come together in one, those that are in heaven and those that are on earth, in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, heaven and earth are one thing. There is not a heaven up there and the earth here. In Jesus, he brought heaven down. Amen? The Babylonian system of the world seeks heaven up there and when i speak about the babylonian system i speak that a lot of us almost everybody of us have to come out and have to recognize how does that operate in our lives jesus came to bring his kingdom down to the earth he is seated at the right hand of the father as the king of kings as the ruler of rulers Hallelujah. As the Lord of Lords, how many of you believe that he's seated at the right side of the Father, that he has already been crowned? Do you believe he has already been crowned Lord of Lords and King of Kings? Hallelujah. So if in him heaven and earth are together, that means that all the reality of heaven has been brought through Jesus Christ for us. So in Jesus Christ, in his kingdom, he brought heaven down to us. He made already the way so we can line up. And how did it happen? How does how we enter into this understanding, this lining up with heaven through the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Many times we gather together and we start praying for the glory of God to come. And we make fastings and we say, Lord, bring your glory to Jacksonville. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But the, the Bible speaks about the glory of Jesus. Jesus is in his throne and he is ruling. He will not rule in the future. He is ruling. When a king sits on a throne, it's for the only purpose to rule. His kingdom has come to the earth and that changes everything. Because everything we are suffering here today, Jesus already paid in the cross of Calvary. Jesus doesn't need to come again to heal you from your sickness. He already took all your sickness in the cross of Calvary. He already became poor so you can be enriched. He already defeated the devil so you can defeat it in every area of your life. So when we look up to, to heaven and we say, oh Lord, help me here, help me there. The Lord, the way the Lord answers is the same way he answered to Moses. Why do you look up to me? Stretch out your rod, stretch out the authority I had given you and cause, and cause things to happen. Now Jesus already paid and is seated in the throne. All fullness has been given to him. And he says he is the head. 
And we are his body, the fullness of all that is in all. We are the fullness of Christ on earth. And we say, Lord, bring down your glory. And we even sing, oh, Lord, bring down your glory. You know what we're doing when we're saying that? We're saying, Lord, we're not recognizing you in your glory. Is it a lesser Jesus, the one you invited into your heart? Or is the same Jesus filled with glory? Christ in us, in all of his glory, in all of his majesty, in all of his rulership, in all of his authority, that is the Jesus that came to dwell in your heart. Is Jesus, is Christ in you, the hope of glory for Jacksonville. We don't need to cry for a glory to come down from heaven like if my Jesus have no glory. I have to rise up. I have to rise up and believe and believe that he that indwells me is the ruler of the universe. That he that indwells me has overcome the devil, has overcome poverty. He has overcome everything. Glory. 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 I pray, said Paul, so they can have spiritual knowledge, spiritual understanding. The mountain of the Lord shall be established above every mountain. And when the Bible speaks about mountains, speaks about government, speaks about ruling places in the heavenly places, the kingdoms of this world, powers, principalities, politics, everything you name it, has a mountain, has rulers in the spiritual realm. But the Lord says, my mountain, my mountain will be established. My kingdom, my authority is above all the authority of Satan. There are people that still believe that we don't have authority over Satan. Because we are so trained to believe in what Hollywood says. And we see the devil like an almighty devil. And you know what? If you see God, the earth is the footstool of his feet. And the devil is no bigger than a cockroach. He's a creature, a fallen, defeated, corrupted, powerless creature. And we're giving the devil so much authority because of a structure of Babylonian mentality yes. within us. Yes. The book of Revelation is a book about two major governments, the government of Christ and the government of Babylon. It is the revelation of the Christ and how he rules from heaven. The Old Testament is the dealing of God before Jesus came to the earth, how did the Lord dealt with man? How did the Lord communicate with man? How did the Lord fought the battles? And the book of Revelation is how he rules from heaven after Jesus was enthroned at the right side of the Father. So he come and speaks about a great harlot a system, a Babylonian system that rules over all the powers. Actually, it says that Babylon rules of, above all the kings of the world. Now, what kings Babylon is ruling over? The Lord made you a king. The Lord says, you are a king and a priest to God my Father. But because of a Babylonian system that has ruled for centuries, 
not only here but all over the world, we are so used to enter and to think with our natural minds and we are losing battles that we should not be losing. The church, if you see the church and God has given us the privilege to travel around the world and we see the church around the world and what is happening is that very few people has grasped the power that Jesus purchased for us. We are living in an ongoing religious system. Most of the people are living in great misery, in great pain, in great affliction, in great tribulation. How many of you know what I'm talking about? That's why Paul is saying, I pray that they will get spiritual understanding, spiritual knowledge so they cannot, they can know the will of the Lord for every circumstance. Every circumstance that has come to your life is to unleash something of Christ and develop something of Christ within you. The holy city, we are the new Jerusalem. How many of you have heard sometime in your life that we are the spiritual Jerusalem? Are we the spiritual Jerusalem? Are we the, the, the Jerusalem of heaven? Are we that Jerusalem? That Jerusalem has to be built inside of us. Because in many times, I mean many times, Jerusalem still in ruins inside of the church heart. And we are going to have no power and no authority. I mean, I can stand here and give you amazing strategies to take the city of Jacksonville. The Lord has used my life to change many nations. The first one was my own nation. That was Mexico. And Mexico was one of the nations that had more martyrdom in, in its history. We are between two great giants of evangelism, the United States and Guatemala. Great evangelists, great missionary power from these two nations. And every time they came to Mexico, they were killed, they were kicked out. It was almost impossible to reach Mexico until we started to cry. And I remember gathering with 70 pastors and we cry so much for Mexico. And we say, how can Mexico be conquered? I mean, it was impossible to go out and preach in the streets. How many times we had to run in the middle of stones where people were stoning us. I have had knives in my throat. People trying to kill us. The government trying to kill us. The Catholic Church in Mexico, which is totally occultic, sending killers to kill us, burning our churches. I mean, I know what it is. And we say, how can we conquer? How can we conquer this nation? How can you win a nation? For Rome has established the patroness of all America in Mexico City, the Virgin of Guadalupe. For people kill for that demon. People, people give their lives for that demon. People, people give all their money for that demon. And you come to the church, and the church is crying, is weeping. They don't know what to do. And we have, we have the power of the Almighty God. They don't have the power. We have the power. Amen. And I can stand here to tell you strategies after strategies on how the Lord used my life and many others to bring Mexico into the greatest revival, into the greatest revival today, more than 20 million Mexicans have come to the Lord. But when we cried, those 70 pastors, when we cried to the Lord, it was less than 0.01% of Christians in, Me in Mexico. But we cried to the Lord. We cry to the Lord and we say, you are the mighty one and you have to have a strategy. We want to know your will, but your will is not with human understanding. Your will is not just to go out and give out tracts to people. We are being stoned 
If we give out tracts to people, if we take a little guitar and start singing in the street, you get stoned. You need another st strategy. You need to understand spiritual wisdom, spiritual understanding. And the Lord gave us that understanding and started to, to, to reveal how this Babylonian city operates in every nation and how it operates in Mexico and how it operates in Jacksonville and how it clouds the city with darkness. I remember something was very, very peculiar in Mexico. When Hernan Cortes, which was the conqueror from Spain, that conquered Mexico, conquered the Aztecs, when he entered into the main city of Mexico, formerly called Tenochtitlan, when he entered, he found the great temple of the sun god surrounded with 136,000 heads stuck in spears around the temple. That's the foundation of my city. The devil appeared to the Aztecs and says, I want to build a city that will control all the other cities. That's the foundation of my country. It's not like America. Oh, let's found a nation with a Bible, let's consecrate the coasts of Jacksonville, of St. Augustine, with Psalm 142, 132, I'm sorry. It's not the same foundation. We needed to learn the highway. And the Lord started to reveal major things. And the only way, and, 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 and when we started to, to, to pray to the Lord, we said, Lord, it's impossible to penetrate the old city. It's impossible. Every time we, we try to evangelize, we, we are ready to be killed. What can we do? And the Lord says, do something, and I'm going to show you what is happening. So he sent us, and there was like a, the main street here. And from that part, there was the, the old city, and in the other side, there was a park. So the Lord says, start to evangelize and see what happens. So we saw something very interesting. Let's say there was a woman with a blue dress being approached by one of our evangelists. And that woman became hysterical within the historical downtown area. But when that same person crossed the main street and entered the park, was approached by another evangelist, and that person willingly gave her life to the Lord. So the Lord says, I want you to understand something. That it's not about people willing or not willing to come to the Christ. But the Bible says because of darkness, they cannot put their ideas in order. Because of darkness. And it says, over the cities are cloaks of darkness that cover the city, so people cannot understand my ways. And you can be in a church, and you can have thousands of people going to a church, and yet not understanding the ways of the Lord. What is Christianity doing to the nations? What is Christianity doing in Jacksonville? Is it something that we're missing? Is it about just bringing people to church? Or there's a dying world out there that if we don't have spiritual understanding, spiritual intelligence, we will never reach. So the Lord showed us how to break that cloak of darkness and come with me to Isaiah 25. And as I say this, I'm going to say it prophetically over the city of Jacksonville. Verse 6, and in this mountain, speaking about the mountain of the Lord, and in this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice pieces, a feast of wines on the less, of fat things full of marrow, of well-refined wines on the lees, and he will destroy on this mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Hallelujah. 
on this mountain. Where is the mountain of the Lord? Where is the mountain of the Lord? Is up there in heaven unreachable? Or we have come to the mountain of the Lord? Doesn't it says you have approached not the mountain that smoke with fire, that everybody's afraid to, but you have come to the Mount Zion. You have come to the mountain of the Lord. You have come to a spiritual place. And when you start to develop the spiritual mountain of the Lord within you, when you start to give, and, 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 and I know where it is to climb a mountain, because in 97, the Lord allowed me by his grace and his grace only to climb Mount Everest, to consecrate it to the Lord. So I know what it is to, high, to climb high mountains. And you cannot climb the mountain of the Lord with things that don't, doesn't belong to the mountain. Imagine you try because you are a great business person and you want to climb. Imagine you're going to climb with a desk on your shoulders. Can you make it to the top? No way. You need only mountaineering, I mean, stuff to climb the mountain. Everything that is unnecessary weight will eventually wear you out. Amen. So the same thing is with the Lord. As we climb the mountain of the Lord, only spiritual things can be carried up that mountain. All of our worries, all of our concerns, our burdens of this earth are hindrances, are chains that are binding you, that are binding you to the lower valleys. As, as the Lord said in the prophecy, as we were singing, it is in the valley, it is in the earth, it is in the earthly things where the jackals and the wolves and the lions are there to devour you. And then people come and says, I don't understand what is happening to me. I'm a good Christian. I go to church every Sunday and I feel all sick. And you see that person in the spirit and you can clearly see jackals beaten. I mean, biting that person and devouring that person. Why? Because it's not about coming to church. It's about understanding that the mountain of the Lord is a spiritual mountain. And if we live above this earth and we live in the mountain of the Lord, in the mountain of the Lord, there are no jackals. So the Lord is calling us and he's calling the United States because we have shallowed down so much the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have watered it down to such a level that every mind can understand it. But the Lord says it's not about the mind understanding it. That is where you get the power. It is about spiritual understanding. My kingdom, my kingdom is not of this dimension. It's not of this time. It's not natural. It's spiritual. The devil can attack Christians, but the devil cannot attack the kingdom of God. The devil cannot attack the mountain of the Lord. So the Lord is asking, where are you dwelling? Oh, I'm dwelling in my own little religion. Oh, I am dwelling in my, in my study of the Bible, and I go through the Bible, and I sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord for that. But the Lord is saying, come up, come up. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And if you want to do the will of the Lord, you need to understand and to hear the spiritual voice of the Lord. I pray, say Paul, I pray. So you will get spiritual knowledge, spiritual intelligence to know the will of the Lord. When you move in the mountain of the Lord, and I am very privileged because we fly all the time. And even though I hate flying, because it's nice to fly once in a while, but we fly every week. So it's very tiring to be in the air. In the other hand, it changes your mentality because a lot of time we are seeing from above. We're seeing the earth so little. And many times when we take off, 
I see so many problems, and the more we climb in the air, the smaller and smaller and smaller those problems are. And when you dwell in the house of the Lord, you start to see things from above. And the great monsters that are in the valley doesn't look like monsters when you are climbing up the mountain. It's like the different perspective. Imagine a little ant trying to crawl this fern. This is an amazing forest. This is a whole world that that little ant will never in her entire life we able, will be able to conquer. For us, it's just a fern. Nothing to dig in. Nothing to discover there. But for that, that little ant, it's a whole universe. So in what universe are we living? In the universe of our earthly mentality or in the kingdom of God? Those that dwell in my holy mountain. Those that dwell in the secret place of the most high God. Have you read Psalm 91? Psalm 91 was not written for you to put it in an open Bible in the entrance of your house. Well, that's what they do in Latin America. I don't know if they do it here. Well, a lot of people are superstitious about Psalm 91. But hearing, hear it with spiritual understanding. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. And why is it secret? Because every time you reach, it's a different way. It's a different breath. It's a different wind that is blowing. It's a different chamber that you enter. It's a secret place with marvelous new things prepared for you out of his amazing love. And he's pouring them and pouring them in that magnificent place of his dwelling place. But most people never even smell it. You know what is cooking up there. And the Lord says, everything is cooking up here. I have so many things to surprise you with my love. I have so many things I have prepared for you before the foundation of the world. But down there, you cannot reach them. Those that dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they will not be afraid of sudden terror. America is afraid of sudden terror. Christians are afraid of sudden terror. Oh, let's go and buy a new, a new uh, 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 insurance because we are terrified. Oh, there's a new flu. The swine flu is coming. Oh, let's, let's see. Let's buy this insurance. Oh, we are so afraid. What are we going to do? And this other thing and that other thing and the crisis. And the war on terror and here and there. Don't you understand, America, the devil, the number one devil in America is a devil that scares America. It scares America because America is bound to the natural things of this world. You are scared and you are vulnerable as you are attached to the world. But in the kingdom of God, those that dwell in that secret place, they will not be afraid of terror. Plague that flies in the night will not touch you. Disease will not touch you. If your enemies come together against you, they will run away from seven different ways. The devil can attack churches. The devil can attack Christians, but cannot attack the dwelling place of the Lord. Cannot attack those that dwell there. That is where your provision is. There is where everything that you need in this world you can take from that place because heaven and earth are together in Christ. And if you can see it there, not imagining it, or imagining that I have a mansion in Pontevedra. No, it's not like that. It's what are you seeing there? Where are the chambers that the Lord is leading you to? And when you enter there, what you discover Oh, Lord, you have prepared this for me. Wow, in my wildest imaginations, I never thought you can give me this. It is yours. It is yours. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Do 
Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that word repent means, means change the way you think. It's not about doing or not doing. Of course, we should not do evil works. But it's about an understanding. It's about where we dwell. It's about how do we know the will of the Lord for me today? Where is the step where I am going to walk in the pre-established path the Lord has prepared for Anna? Not for pastor over there, not for the other pastor, for Anna. You need to know it because you're not called to follow somebody else's steps. You can be in a congregation, you can be under a, a, a vision, you can work together as a team, but there is a preordained path for each and every individual. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now come back to Colossians, where we were. And it says, verse, chapter 2, verse 8, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Now watch this very carefully, because the church has been drinking mixed wine. And we've been drinking the philosophies of the world. And we've been drinking messages that don't come from God, but are the basic principles. And people are taking, I'm serious, there are pulpits that are being filled with people that are taking their knowledge from the life coaches of the world. Hello? Hello? Watch out, do not be cheated. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Because they will have a certain success, but they don't have eternal life. When the devil will want to devour, you will be devoured, because it's the valley. And in the valley, you are not safe, no matter what the life coaches say. It's not about inviting Donald Trump to preach to the Christian, to know how we can become millionaires. You see where we are taken? Holy God. Verse 20. Therefore, if you died with Christ, from the basic principles of the world, why as thou living in the world do you subject yourself to regulations such and such and such? What do we need to die? We need to die in order to climb the mountain, in order to enter the kingdom of God, in order to know his will for us. I need to die to the basic principles of the world. What are the basic principles of the world? The way the world solves their problems. The way the world solves their problems is not the way Jesus solves the problems. And we are suffering. And we are suffering because we believe we are good Christians and we are so bound with the basic principles of the world. Somebody says, talk to me, Lord. Talk to me, Lord. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than my ways. And the life that you're living is a result of the mixed wine you have been taken. But I have better ways. So if you have died with Christ, and then verse, chapter 3, verse 1, if then you were raised, first you, would, you died, now you're raised. If then... You were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on 
things above and not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life will manifest, then you also will appear with him in glory. Now this word manifest is the same word that is used when Jesus talked to John. And he says, those that do my commandments are the ones that love me. And those that love me, my father and I will come and make a dwelling place in them. And, and Philip asked, and how will you manifest to us and not to the world? And he says, I will manifest by making a dwelling place inside of you. So the manifestation is not something outside of us. It's not talking about the second coming of Christ. It's talking about Christ manifesting through us and in us, those in whom God has made his dwelling place. Now, God wants to make a dwelling place inside of the church. And God needs that the mountain of the Lord will be established in Jacksonville. He needs people with understanding to follow his will. Those that are born of the Spirit are like the wind. What does it mean to be like the wind? The wind is the only element that is not attached to the earth. Water is in the surface of the earth. Fire needs something to burn. Earth is earth, but the only element that is unattached is the wind. Those that are born of my spirit are like the wind. And those that are born of the spirit, their life is hidden in Christ. If you have died to the basic principles of the world and you have risen in Christ, you have risen into a different kingdom, into a different dimension. And he says, if you have risen with Christ, seek the things of above, where, not any place of above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. And what is happening where in that place where he's sitting in the right hand of the Father that are the things that we need to seek? It's his kingdom. Look above. Look his rulership. Look his authority. Look up there. Because if your sight is focused there, if you are seeing there, you will not be troubled in the bottom of the mountain. Because your life truly will be hidden in him. Can you imagine the millions of people that will come to Christ if Christians will not get sick? Do you know it was purchased in the cross of Calvary, the ability to live in divine health? Now I know what I'm talking, and I know how the devil comes and cannot touch my body or my family. He cannot. Because we have made our Lord our dwelling place. I have not made the Bank of America my dwelling place. Providence Insurance my dwelling place. The Country Club my dwelling place. Hello? I have made the Lord my dwelling place. And because I have done that, sickness cannot touch me. For 450 years, the people of Israel, before Christ, before, before Jesus dying on the cross and taking our infirmities in his body, lived with no sickness. You know what the people said? People said, that is a God different than any other God. His people are different than the people of the world. And they will see. That's what Balaam says, come and curse. Curse the people of Israel so I can come against them. Because they were untouchable. They were untouchable. Because the glory of the Lord rests upon them. The glory of the Lord cannot be touched by the devil. 
The glory of the Lord cannot be touched by infirmity. The glory of the Lord cannot be broken by any demonic force, by any terror. The glory of the Lord cannot be touched. Wake up and see that I have given them my glory, says the Lord. The glory that I have with you, I have given them. Wake up their spirits so they can see, so they can see what is the power and the authority and the glory that indwells. Real Christian life. Holy Holy, 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 come up my mountain, says the Lord, and you will not be touched. Come up my mountain, and you will rule and reign with me. Come up my mountain, and I will show you things from above that people beneath can never, never get to see. Holy, 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 the holy one of Israel is here. Holy, break, break, oh Lord, our understanding. Help us to die. Help us to die in Christ. To the basic rudiments of the world. To the solutions of the world. Man doesn't have a solution for your health. Man doesn't have a solution for the financial crisis. Man doesn't have a... Solution for your marriage? Why are you seeking among men your solutions? When I am the Lord, thy God, that call you. When I am the Lord, thy God, that has anointed you. When I am the Lord, thy God, that indwells you. Holy. And I'm not only preaching to you, I'm preaching to powers and principalities. Because I don't need, I don't need one million people to touch a city. We need the mountain of the Lord to be exposed. And if, it, if, it, if just in one person, just in one person, the mountain of the Lord is exposed. Baal. And the prophets of Jezebel and all of his crowd are defeated. One person, one person, one person that understands what I'm saying. Psalm 122. Father, open our understanding. Open our understanding. We need to get back America. We need to get back America. We need this nation to be the nation that you call it from heaven. And you call this nation your precious, mighty, powerful nation. A nation that will be a fountain of life to the nations of the world. A fountain of riches, a fountain of well-being, a fountain of mercy, a fountain of love to a dying world. Oh Lord, we lost the track, we lost your will, we became religious. And we water down the power to exalt ourselves. I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the air. The Lord knows what I'm doing. Psalm 122. I'm also talking to some people. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gate, O Jerusalem. And the Lord says, Jerusalem is built. I'm not going to build Jerusalem again. Jerusalem is built in the spirit. Jerusalem is my holy city in heaven. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact and together. Oh, I release these words into this nation. 
a city that is compact and together, a people that is in unity, a people that is looking his kingdom and not their own kingdoms. For the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Now listen to this. For thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. How do you change the destiny of a city? How do you change the destiny of your own circumstance? How do you change the destiny of a nation? Understanding where you dwell. If you are raised with Christ, if you are raised with Christ, seek the things of above where he is sitting at the right hand of the throne, of the throne. From within Zion, from within Jerusalem, thrones are being established. And those thrones are to be occupied by the, by the kings and the priests of Jesus Christ. Those that understand their position. Those that take their place and say, the only sit where I want to sit is in the throne in the throne that changes things, in the throne where I have your authority, in the throne where you are glorified because you have truly made me a king and a priest and I have authority to judge evil, to judge the occult, to judge the sins of the world that are rising up to take our nation, to judge abortion, to judge murdering, to judge the breaking of families in America. Somebody needs to take their position in heaven. This is the kingdom. Jerusalem is built. Jerusalem is built and there is where the thrones are. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? One day the Lord asked me, and he said, how much your life worth? And the answer to that is what I am willing to do with my life. I'm going to sit down in a pew. Am I going to complain the rest of my life? Or are I going to penetrate the cross of Calvary? Are I going to penetrate the places in God in such a way that this life will make a difference? And the day I am taken to be with the Lord, because it's the end of my days, I want people to know, and I made a difference, and I paid a price. Anna did not waste her time. How much is your life worth? How do you want to be remembered? Not because we are anybody, but there are lives that are worthy to remember. I love that scripture in Hebrews where it speaks about those that were seeking the holy city, that in their search, they were cut with a saw. And then he says, those that the world was not worthy of them. Can you imagine heaven speaking about you? The earth was not worthy of him. The earth was not worthy. She was so close to God. She entered the places to cry for his people. She entered the places. He entered the places. They gave their lives 
to make a difference in their lifetime. What do you want heaven to talk about you? Jacksonville needs us. You and me. The United States needs us. How long are we going to wait? What are you going to do with your life? The mountain of the Lord is in front of you. Leave behind what you need to leave behind and climb with him to the glorious dwelling place of his amazing riches of glory. And you will make a difference not only in Jacksonville, in the world. Holy, holy, there's a holy presence there's a holy presence because the holy mountain is here and all around the holy mountain is holy. This is the law of the house that everything in the mountain and in the house is holy. The glory of God is shining. The glory of God is an attractive force that pulls you into his holiness, that takes you out from the comfort zone into the very place where he will rebuild you. Holy, holy, holy. I need a holy generation, says the Lord. Holy in my ways, holy in my thoughts. Holy in the way you express mercy and love and compassion. Holy in the way you forgive. Holy in the way you consider yourself when someone has hurt you. The same way you were forgiven. Forgive those that have hurt you. Be holy, says the Lord. I brought you here to hear, to quicken your spirit to set a fire in your spirit, to call you into my glory. <laughs> 